Donna and Eva. Eva. And today we're going to be bringing you rock and shell painting. And Eva and I, we worked the other night for a little while doing some samples to get started. So we would have um, some pieces to show you how to add some words to our little rocks today. And then we're going to show you from start to finish, but we kind of needed them to be dry to show you the lettering portion for today. So she's starting to work on some lettering, but I wanted to show you what we worked on the other evening. So what we discovered was nail polish is a really, really, really cool way to add some color. Now the bottom of this was actually spray paint. I was playing outside with spray paint. So if you have spray paint in your house, you can play along with that. But nail polish was really fun. Make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. We found that out, didn't we, Eva? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was also nail polish. So nail polish is an oil-based enamel paint. So what that means, basically, you can't um, mix your brush with water because it's not going to mix well with the oil paint, okay? So the oil and water do not mix. So what I did here was I did a little spray painting and then I went back and I added some nail polish and then I did let them dry overnight. Eva did this lovely little love rock, which is really nice. So she did like this teal, um, and this one, this teal nail polish and then one. added her text. Which one? Oh yeah, this one's really nice too. So she did kind of like a silver little um, nail polish and then added the word peace. So another little trick we came up with was puffy paint. So puffy paints, they definitely take overnight to dry. In fact, if you read the bottle, it says that they need to sit for 72 hours. So you really need to avoid touching them. It's really tempting to touch them. So just kind of avoid that, put them somewhere where you can leave them alone. So she painted this rock and then she went back and did the puffy paints to add a little bit of detail to it. So that was pretty cool. And then the main thing you gotta remember with the paint pens, and I love me some paint pens, okay? Paint pens and markers, very similar to each other, okay? In that you've basically got an end to it that is, um, it's basically like a little paintbrush, okay? Same thing with a Sharpie. Your end is basically a teeny tiny little um, paintbrush, okay? So if you were to scribble onto wet or even tacky nail polish or paint, you are gonna clog, what'd you say? It'll ruin the end. Yeah, it's gonna ruin the end of your paint pen. So what Eva is doing, she's adding details, oops, with paint pens to her rocks, but she was a good kid and she let her rocks and her seashells dry overnight. This was one that we added some nail polish to the inside of the seashell and we let it dry overnight. Didn't do anything to the outside just yet. Same thing with this one, ooh la la. The cool thing about nail polish we discovered, it is a really cool enamel paint. It's got a built-in shiny. So you don't really necessarily have to do a clear coat of clear nail polish or clear spray paint or even Mod Podge over top of it because it's already got a built-in shiny, which is really cool. Um, so if you used acrylic paint, you might go back and even coat it with a little bit of clear spray paint or clear nail polish or Muji Puji Mod Podge to kind of seal it in. So, um, I've got just some standard household primer that I've been using. It's really good to coat the rocks. It does take a couple of coats, so you may want to keep that in mind. The other cool thing about the nail polish is they are really good just by doing two coats, so you really don't have to prime, so that's kind of an added bonus. If you were to use um, tempera paint, tempera paints don't cover great to begin with. So you might have to do some sort of base coat of something because temper paints aren't the greatest for coverage, okay? Acrylics cover much, much better. Some other options, if you've got any house paints laying around, this was just a sample that I had gotten at a hardware store for like a quarter. These are really great. These are super thick. That's what was on this rock right here. This did take about three coats to cover, but man, this rock covered really well. And then it has the puffy paints on top of it. So if you don't have a paint palette, um, the piece of glass that we saved from our assemblage art, this is actually pretty handy for a little paint palette, Eva. So I'm gonna put this right here. You can put little squirts of paint on that if you want. And we can turn that into a little paint palette, okay? Um, now I'm gonna start by priming my rocks. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna prime this seashell too. 
and get some. Where's the gold? Thing? Oh, sorry. Did you want to put a little? Yeah. Now remember, if you're gonna mix nail polish, remember nail polish is an oil-based paint, so it's not gonna like temper right off the bat. So was that nail polish? So we may have to let that dry for a couple of minutes before you do the gold paint on top of it, because if I want to wash it off, I don't like. Well, it. remember, it's not gonna want to wash off, right? So whatever you do, don't mix any um, temper paint or acrylic paint. Don't mix it with wet nail polish because it'll jam up your paintbrush and it'll get your paintbrush all like gummed up. But her nail polish dried pretty quick. If you're gonna use a lot of nail polish, the other thing you might wanna do is have a fan going. So we've got a window down here in the basement and I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that window is cracked. So one thing that's really important when you go out on your walk, on your walk to pick your rocks, that's hard to say, rock to pick your walks, walk to rock, go out on your walk to pick your rocks. Try to say that. Walk to pick your rocks. Say it three times. Walk to pick your rocks, walk to pick your rocks, walk to pick your rocks. Well, maybe it's just me. When you go out on your walk to pick your rocks, fine, whatever. Anyway, so when you go out on your walk to pick your rocks, I like the ones that are flat like this is a lovely lovely rock nice and flat it doesn't have like crazy divots in the surface you know like gouges like it would be really nice to write on i'm gonna go ahead and shake it up and then if you find any nail polishes that are kind of chunky and they're not covering very well. I wouldn't throw them away. You can actually add a little bit of paint thinner or a little bit of nail polish remover. If you're gonna add paint thinner, I would not recommend putting these back on your fingers. These would then be craft paint, okay? But thinning them out just a little will help them, you know, apply a little bit easier to surfaces. So I use nail polish all the time for crafty stuff. And I'm going to put my ones that I'm doing today over out of the way so I don't confuse them with the ones that we did last time. Okay, Eva? Anything that I painted today with fresh nail polish that needs to sit overnight, I'm putting over there, okay? Okay. Now, this is Eva's little rock that she set overnight and it's stuck to paper towel. You can actually take a little bit of water. So this dried overnight. You can take a little bit of water. Are you finished with this one? Um, I was gonna put words. Do you wanna put something on it? Yeah. So I'm gonna try to peel it off with a little bit of water because the water will help break down the paper towel. And then hopefully it doesn't peel off all of her cute little paint because puffy paint will peel off. So it's kind of coming off. How is that not dry yet? What? I literally just painted that. Why did you just touch it? Why did you touch it? Cause I thought it was from Eva, yesterday. Eva, I just said to you, what did I just say I was putting over there? Mm, the ones I painted today? Yeah. I just said, I'm putting over here the ones from today so that we don't get them confused, right? Mm -hmm. So do you think that means that we should or should not touch them? No. No, so don't touch them, okay? okay. All right, we don't want little fingerprints permanently in the nail polish. What's a three letter word? Three letter word? Mm -hmm. Um, like a like a positive word. Mm -hmm. So that's the other thing with these. We got to think about what do we want our messages to be, right? Um, you could get cute and do like test, text message spelling and do love like L-U-V. So we want to think about our words, okay? So these memory stones, these memory stones are really important, okay? You want to think of a word that is going to maybe be a word to live by or a word that's something you need to be reminded of. I have one on my desk at school that says health. 
that's my reminder to take care of myself. It might be my reminder to take my vitamins that morning. This one's my reminder to create. So this one is also on my desk at school. Then I've also got one. This is a really tough one. This one says forgive. Um, that's a really, really tough one for a lot of people, okay? You get in an argument with somebody and you have a really hard time letting things go. This one also says forgive. I've got a little letter on each petal of this little guy. And then right now, we're all going through something. So I decided to try to have a silver linings rock. Um, this is my reminder to find my silver linings, okay? So it could be a simple message. It could also be a phrase. Keep in mind, you're not gonna be able to fit a whole lot on this little guy. Then this little guy, I've got, this is my let go rock, okay? Sometimes I hold on to things. That also goes with forgiveness. So letting go is really important, all right? Now this one I did um, paint pen and then I let it dry and I went back and I added some gel pens to kind of jazz this bad boy up. And then I did a little clear coat of spray paint. I don't have any spray paint right now in the house, but I do have clear nail polish. So I'm gonna try that. Um, and then of course we've got our little puffy paint. And then this was the other art teacher, Stephanie. She did this one the other morning when we were uh, at the arts council. And then this one was like a little mandala we tried to do with the little puffy paints after we had painted the rock. Let it dry for a little while. Wait, it's mandala? Mandala, mm -hmm. it's that circular. Oh, Mm, well, there's Mary Magdalene, then there's a mandolin, and then there's mandalas. Yeah, I thought it was mandolin. Then there's the Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Quite a lot. Anyway, then, all right, so then I've got my, my breathe rock. This one's really important because I've been trying to do a lot more meditation lately, all right? So, um, this one is a really important rock, okay? This is the one that's gonna sit on your desk when you need to be reminded to kind of take little breaks, um, forgive yourself, take a deep breath. It's really hard to have a panic attack if you are remembering to take those diaphragmatic breaths, those breaths from the belly that expand your belly out and really, really, really fill you with that good, good breath, okay? So that's a really important rock. So your word, your, your word of purpose, your word, is going to be different from somebody else's okay um it doesn't necessarily have to be like a super crazy deep profound rock it could be just a cute little cactus rock there's so many possibilities Eva, that one is really pretty. Yeah, what was that? Um, What'd you do? That? Oh man, that's gorgeous. <music> this seashell, I did kind of a blue last time. And I'm thinking I'm gonna do like a landscape. Now I could do acrylic paint in there, but I think I'm gonna try to do maybe something with nail polish. I'm really digging this Can nail you polish. Like forgive on it? Yeah. What color do you want? I don't know. Well, I'm liking I'm really liking this white paint pen. Do you where do you want it on the top? Or mm -hmm. the side? Top. Bye. You leaving me? You ditching me? Okay, go wash your hands. So the blue I painted last time and let it dry overnight. So that is nail polish. And then that's a white skinny, skinny paint pen. And then I did gold puffy paint for the sunshine. And then that's teal nail polish. And then I just did a little gold temper paint for accents. I'm gonna let it dry really well and then seal it in with some clear nail polish. So this is a seashell that doesn't have any primer on it. A lot. 
So this is a pretty thick house paint. So this one didn't even really need a primer. So that is very exciting. And if you want to do a fade and do like a little kind of ombre thing, as the kids these days say, you want to work while your paint is wet to get a good fade. So if I want to get a good fade going on, I can take a little squirt of, this is acrylic that I had. Now sometimes, here's a little, a little tip. Sometimes house paints don't mix like acrylic. So if you've ever had two different colors of house paint and you're like, oh, I'll mix these together. Sometimes, that doesn't quite work because of the way that the pigments are. quote in here that says sunny rays lazy days and my sunshine looks kind of like a sunflower so what I'm going to do is let that dry and then I'm going to go over it with black sharpie and that's going to really help this pop out because right now I need some definition because this is not looking like a sunshine check this out so I got a little bit too much and I'm getting kind of close to my age so I've just going to draw that, kind of drag it out this way, drag it out that way, and I could even maybe borrow from over here. These have a tendency to settle down too when they, when they dry. I kind of spread that tea out a little bit. And it's a little lumpy right now, but I'm not real worried about that because I am gonna go back and do some paint pen on top of it after it dries overnight. I write my art babies. Apparently my real baby has abandoned me. She decided that she had had enough of me and she's upstairs practicing keyboard. But thanks for joining us. Um, I. I'm going to come back and do some more on the pieces that I did today that aren't quite ready. Some things to remember, um, don't mix your paint pens or your Sharpies with wet paint because you will kill them. Um, they just think of them like teeny weeny little paint brushes and they're going to absorb all that paint, okay? And you don't want them to die. Some other things to remember that nail polish is oil-based paint. It is okay to use it with tempera or acrylic. You just need to let it dry before you start kind of getting in there with other types of paint, okay? Because it will kind of muck up your paint brushes. And then you're gonna need, you know, like paint thinner and it's just a big old mess. So just make sure that your nail polish dries thoroughly, all right? The puffy paints, something really important to remember with these is you gotta let them, gotta let them dry overnight, all right? Don't try messing with them or you'll regret it. You're gonna bonk into them and you'll be sad because they'll be all messed up. So just make sure you're, oops, make sure that you let them dry, dry, dry before you move them, okay? Um, don't forget to rinse your paintbrushes really well because the puffy paints will clog your paintbrushes. Um, they are like plastic based, so they will kill your paintbrushes. Um, so just make sure that you rinse them really, really well. So I hope you had fun. Um, you can paint on other things this way too, but rocks and seashells are one of those things that I think you can find. Everybody's got some seashells from their last beach trip, even if they're not the jumbo seashells from our dinner that we had, right? Just make sure you sanitize them if you do what we did, okay? And then you can just take a walk and grab some of those rocks. Keep in mind the ones that were more flat those are going to be your best for writing on because you don't have to compete with the texture and the grooves and all that all right so that's something to remember as well you don't have to use a sealer like clear spray paint or clear nail polish but if you have it that is very helpful um just make sure that your paint thoroughly dries before you do any of that okay um if you do that do keep in mind that clear spray paint 
does not like Sharpie very well. So that's something I found out the hard way. If you want to do clear spray paint in Sharpie, a little bit of a trick, you can do like a, just a, like barely a mist of clear spray paint. Let that dry for a little while and then you can come back and do that several times. And what that does is it just builds up a very, very subtle and gradual layer of that clear spray paint and locks that in so that you don't kind of activate that um, Sharpie and get that like bleed kind of thing that happens when the clear spray paint and the Sharpie kind of mesh and melt together. It gets really weird and funky. So that's kind of a sad accident that I had happen on a really nice piece of artwork. So just keep that in mind. Um, so we hope you had fun and, um, get out there and explore and make some art. And until next time, peace out art babies.